மாஸ் கீழப்பாவூர் ஹாய் வெல்கம் டு மாஸ் கீழப்பாவூர் சேனல் ஐ எம் டாக்டர் அருணா சண்முகவேல் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு லேர்ன் அபவுட் த ஃபீச்சர்ஸ் ப்ரெசென்ட் இன் போஸ்டீரியர் பார்ட் ஆஃப் நார்மா பேசாலஸ் லெட் எஸ் சி எ கோட் பிஃபோர் என்ட்ரிங் இன் டு த செஷன் தெர் ஆர் நோ சீக்ரெட்ஸ் டு சக்ஸஸ் இட் இஸ் தி ரிசல்ட் ஆஃப் ப்ரிப்பரேஷன் ஹார்ட் ஒர்க் அண்ட் லேர்னிங் ஃப்ரம் ஃபெயிலியர் த ஏரியா பிஹைண்ட் தி இமேஜினரி லைன் ட்ரான் த்ரூ தி ஆன்டீரியர் மார்ஜின் ஆஃப் ரேமன் மேக்னம் அப் டு தி எக்ஸ்டர்னல் ஆக்சிபிட்டல் ப்ரோட்டோபரன்ஸ் வித் சுப்பீரியர் நியூக்கல் லைன்ஸ் இஸ் த போஸ்டீரியர் பார்ட் ஆஃப் நார்மா பேசாலஸ் த போன்ஸ் சீன் இன் திஸ் ஏரியா ஆர் ஆக்சிபிட்டல் அண்ட் டெம்பரல் போன்ஸ் த லார்ஜஸ்ட் ஃபொராமன் சீன் இன் திஸ் ஏரியா இஸ் தி ஃபொராமன் மேக்னம் த்ரூ விச் கிரேனியல் கேவிட்டி கம்யூனிகேட்ஸ் வித் தி வர்டிபிரல் கெனால் த பவுண்ட்ரி ஃபொராமன் மேக்னம் இஸ் ஃபார்ம்டு பை ஆல் தி த்ரீ பார்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஆக்சிபிட்டல் போன் தட் இஸ் பேசில்லார் பார்ட் இன் ஃப்ரண்ட் ஸ்காமஸ் பார்ட் பிஹைண்ட் அண்ட் காண்டெல்லார் பார்ட் ஆன் ஐதர் சைட் it has anterior narrow part and posterior wider part the alar ligament which is attached to the tubercle on medial aspect of occipital condyle divides the foramen magnum into smaller anterior compartment and larger posterior compartment the anterior compartment transmits apical ligament upper band of cruciate ligament membrana tectoria the larger posterior compartment transmits lower end of medulla oblongata with its meninges the anterior and posterior spinal arteries descend the right and left vertebral arteries and spinal root of accessory nerve ascend sympathetic plexus along the vertebral arteries veins that join venous plexus of medulla oblongata with vertebral plexus of veins lower part of tonsil of the cerebellum may project on each side of medulla oblongata the anterior and posterior margins of foramen magnum give attachment to anterior and posterior atlanto occipital membranes respectively there are two occipital condyles one on each side of the foramen magnum near its anterior part the condyles are kidney shaped and their long axis is directed forwards and medially the convex condyle articulates with concave superior articular facet of atlas forming atlanto occipital joint the margins of the condyle give attachment to capsule of atlanto occipital joint the alar ligament is attached to the tubercle present on the medial side of condyle the hypoglossal canal or anterior condylar canal lies above the anterior part of each condyle it transmits hypoglossal nerve meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery and emissary vein a depression behind the condyle is called as posterior condylar fossa this larges the posterior part of superior facet of atlas during extension of neck sometimes posterior condylar fossa may be perforated if so it is called as posterior condylar cana it transmits an emissary vein that connects sigmoid sinus with veins of suboccipital triangle just lateral to the occipital condyle jugular process is seen that receives insertion of rectus capitis lateralis muscle in some individuals there may be a small eminence from this jugular process called paramastoid process this process 
sometimes may be long enough to articulate with the transverse process of atlas the anterior surface of jugular process is intended to form jugular notch it articulates with petrous part of temporal bone thereby forming jugular foramen the jugular foramen is divided into three compartments by two bony spicules called intrajugular process the anterior compartment transmits inferior petrosal sinus which is the only sinus coming out of the skull and joins with internal jugular vein in the middle compartment 9th 10th 11th cranial nerves meningeal branch of ascending pharyngeal artery and emissary vein pass the sigmoid sinus passes through the posterior compartment and continues as the internal jugular vein the jugular fossa is a deep depression behind the opening of carotid canal and it enlarges the superior bulb of internal jugular vein in the lateral part of jugular fossa mastoid canaliculus is seen that transmits auricular branch of vagus nerve between carotid canal and jugular fossa tympanic canaliculus that is jacobson's foramen is seen that transmits tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal nerve also known as jacobson's nerve a triangular notch is present anterior to jugular fossa and medial to carotid canal it enlarges the inferior ganglion of glossopharyngeal nerve immediately lateral to the jugular foramen a thin pointed slender process projects downwards and forwards from the petrous part of temporal bone called styloid process it is 2.5 cm in length and derived from second branchial arch the styloid process near its base sheathed by tympanic plate this part is called as tympanohyal part the uncovered part is stylohyal part the muscle stylohyoid takes origin from the lateral aspect of styloid process the stylopharyngeus from the upper medial part and styloglossus from the anterior aspect near the tip the stylohyoid ligament extends from the tip of styloid process and the stylomandibular ligament from the lateral aspect of the tip the styloid process and the three muscles and two ligaments attached to it are together called as styloid apparatus posterior to the styloid process that is between styloid and mastoid process is the stylomastoid foramen the facial nerve comes out of this foramen and stylomastoid branch of posterior auricular artery enters into it the styloid process is laterally crossed by facial nerve at its base and external carotid artery at its tip it is covered by the parotid gland in its upper part medially the styloid process is related to carotid sheath the mastoid process is a conical projection that appears at the age of 1 and completes its growth by puberty the lateral surface gives insertion to sternocleidomastoid splenius capitis and longissimus capitis in the medial aspect of mastoid process a deep notch is seen called mastoid notch that gives origin to posterior belly of digastric further medial to the notch a shallow groove is seen that enlarges occipital artery close to the posterior border of mastoid part mastoid emissary foramen is present through this foramen emissary vein passes that communicates sigmoid sinus with posterior auricular vein 
also a small branch of occipital artery enters the external occipital protuberance is a prominence midway between the posterior margin of foramen magnum and the superior angle of the bone opposite to this level that is internally superior sagittal sinus ends and transverse sinus begins the external occipital protuberance give attachment to ligamentum nuchae the highest nuchal lines run upward and laterally from external occipital protuberance one on each side and give attachment to gallia aponeurotica another pair of superior nuchal lines extend straight laterally from external occipital protuberance on either side the medial one third of this line gives origin to trapezius and lateral two third of this line gives origin to occipital belly of occipital frontalis and receives insertion of sternocleidomastoid and splenius capitis the external occipital crest extends from external occipital protuberance to foramen magnum the inferior nuchal lines extend laterally from the middle of the external occipital crest on either side just below the superior nuchal lines ligamentum nuchae is attached to the external occipital crest the muscle semi spinalis capitis is inserted in the medial part between superior and inferior nuchal line and laterally is the obliquus capitis superior below the inferior nuchal line medially rectus capitis posterior minor and laterally rectus capitis posterior major are inserted shall we end of this session with a quote action is the foundational key to all success thank you for watching if you like this video don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon select all to get instant notification